It should all be off now, so it's just me. I think I prefer that, actually. This is our Moodle page. It's coming along, as I've said. Uh, what you'll see is that, for example, in our first topic, all the lectures now have the slides and a YouTube video. Looks like that. In the old days, we used to record these lectures, put them up on, on live for people, and generally that wasn't really liked. People didn't like it when you couldn't see the face and you couldn't hear the questions being asked in the audience. So these are custom designed to be online lectures and they're sort of reasonably short. Some of them are anyway. Um, and that's, they're kind of worked to an extent. I mean, they get watched all over the world. They've, they've been watched in like 70 countries by a few thousand people. So they're not just, um, you know, useless. They seem to at least connect on some level. You've got that already. That's the first few topics covered, the first four weeks. I'm going to continue, if I, there we go. I continue recording those for you, and that's, I think there's 12 or 13 basic topics that just cover the, the information. Another reason that I do recorded lectures like that is because, well, there's a lot of reasons actually, but I don't want to put a big emphasis on just the information. So the labs that we're doing, and the way that they're assessed emphasize your ability to evaluate the information and how good it is. That's far more important than just knowing information. And the second assessment in particular, which of course will be a little bit mirrored in the online exam at the end, that's also asking you how you use the information. So there's much less of this, I tell you, you tell me back, you get a mark, and much more of can you assess the value of the information and can you use the information, bearing in mind how good or bad it is? Some of you have heard this spiel before, I guess, but I think it's really important that I, in fact, yesterday I said to one of the six groups, one of the people I was speaking to yesterday was convinced, no, last week, convinced they messed up last year's unit that I taught on sports psychology. And I walked away from that conversation thinking, no, it wasn't that, because the actual mark at the end was pretty good. I think the person concerned was far more concerned that they knew what was expected really clearly and they knew they weren't quite doing it. And that's a different experience. A lot of time we just go in not quite sure what's expected and do our best. I really try and make it clear what will get you the high marks and what will get you through and what won't get you through. And that's why some people have that feeling of, damn, I'm not there yet. And obviously the answer in that case is to either ask more questions or work a bit harder. But I'm hoping as you go through, especially after these first couple of sessions, it's very clear what's going to be required. So far so good. You can hear me still. I'm speaking English. This is all good. Uh, unit handbook appears in that corner. They've all gone online for the first time. You, if you haven't heard already, you wouldn't believe how much hassle it is to produce this little window you're looking at now. There's some kind of ugly background coding system that just does not like human beings. We, we've got it working. Uh, as a result of surviving that system, there's one ridiculous typo here, which was pointed out to me a couple of days ago. Obviously that's May or April, I just forgot what month things finish. It's the end of term can't be in April, you're still mid-semester. Mid I can't fix that now, it's gone, but I'm the person in charge, so I'll just set the deadline on Moodle and you'll know. No problem. Uh, as, it, as it explains on here, generally speaking, the best person to email is Anthea. She's my kind of uh, admin person, really. She knows what she's talking about. She's a good teacher and she's done it all before. However, I'm currently trying to take over the world on a number of fronts. A quarter of a million dollar trial in Melbourne. Uh, trying to take over some sort of sports psychology services and evaluate their effectiveness. So I'm trying to do all this really cool stuff. And much as I love you all, I only want the really big problems, not the little kind of small ones. So Anthea is my kind of mopper up, and she'll deal with the small stuff. If she can't answer it, it'll come to me. And I've stolen that from some guys in Sydney, which seems to be a good system. Introduction to the unit. All the content either is already there or will shortly be there. And as you're aware at universities now, there's this big push to make it so that you may never have to actually see a person in the flesh. I think you can get through that way. You know, but you haven't wasted your time coming in because I also think you get a lot more out of appearing in person 
And in particular, I had this experience last year when I asked people to come in and give their impression of where they're up to and what they're struggling with and what they're trying to do, fix at that point in time. I leave most of those conversations thinking I've definitely helped that person, some learning has occurred. The person normally walks away happy. But you only hit those problems when you're trying to do the work, when you're trying to solve problems. So if I try and anticipate and teach you all the same thing every week, it gets really boring. And some people are undicated for and some aren't up to that level yet. So it's really important to me that you work at your level, at your pace. You've got your own hand in dates. You pretty much pick those yourselves. So it's kind of, you work at your own pace, you bring the problems that you're experiencing when you're ready, and I help you through them when it's relevant and important to you. It's impossible for me to guess where you're up to at any point in time and just magically know what to say. So I hope that's a reasonable arrangement. It's a very different thing to what happened all through school, where there is kind of fixed things to try and get you through, and you just did that and you were fine. So every year, there's a student assessment uh, feedback and every year I get okay marks and then some people are just mean, stop being mean. But generally speaking, the biggest predictor of your experience of how happy you are is your expectations at this point in time. And some of that's come from just culture and media and some of that's come from maybe the marketing team here at the University of Canberra who we're having a meeting with soon to make sure they tell you the right information. Because that classic thing is when you t you're told you're going to university, why should I go to university? People say, oh, to get a job. And I want to be really clear, there's, that probably isn't the, oh, all I'm here for. There's very few jobs where I can just give you a piece of information and that will last you for life. I think my favourite example is probably just, you know, some, it's a job where you can be replaced by a robot eventually or by software. If it's just a piece of information that makes it special, that's no good. You know, flipping burgers or something. There you go, that's it, that'll last you for your whole career to do that one thing. It's really important, the reason you're here, believe it or not, even despite what you've been told, is to have more options when you leave, more choices of jobs. And say, for example, you pick a job and it ceases to exist, which happens nowadays, you'll be able to retrain and reskill, you'll be flexible. And that's where these ideas around evaluating information come from and being able to accumulate and gather and use information fruitfully. Hence, therefore, thus, doing the labs and designing the intervention are a big parts of our assessment. Does that kind of make sense? It might be the first time that it's been explained that way. But I think it's quite persuasive. I don't want to just give you a piece of information. One of my favourite ever kind of stories was the Harvard graduation ceremony where as they walked across the stage, the Chancellor was saying, as you're walking across here, about a third of what you learnt in that degree is now obsolete. It's been replaced by new information. So you'd better not have just memorised facts for the last three years. If you can evaluate them and if you can use them, having evaluated them, that makes you bulletproof. I need a nod, so I need some nods. Okay, good enough. <laughs> the ones who are staying quiet will probably just be giving the feedback at the end. I'm big and... Louder? This loud? Yes, awesome. I have been teaching this for a long time. Even though I'm a psychologist, motor control seems to be something that I am asked to teach a lot. I've improved it a lot over the years. So what you're getting now is very carefully considered, uh, you know, very carefully mapped onto the outcomes that you're supposed to get if you want accreditations and things like that. On the one hand, I understand how some people prefer to get everything face to face and be kind of spoon fed information. On the other hand, I know that in a business sense, that doesn't make a lot of sense anymore. And actually, learning wise, we need to create creatures who can drive their own learning. And if it's always on offer and it's always being spoon fed to you, not many people will get up and learn to cook or learn to hunt. So you need to feel a little bit lost, a little bit out of your depth, so that you learn to hunt and learn to cook your own food or 
metaphorically, make your own information and make sense of it. So it will feel uncomfortable. Loud enough? It's not just passion, it's being loud. I've been told to be loud. I know that quote at the bottom gets used far too much, but that's behind the thinking. It's really important that you're able to do this. When you hit problems, I am still here to help. You're not on your own. It's just that I need you to go and hit problems first. That's how we learn, on the limit of our ability. A lot of what you're going to get, especially in the basic lectures, is an introduction. And you can totally survive, if you only want to pass because P's get degrees, you can totally survive with a little bit of textbook and the lectures, and you can pretty much get through. Of course it won't feel comfortable, because you're just scraping through. But there is the capacity in there for you to, especially in the second assignment that I'll explain, to go and really show off, and really gather information yourself relevant to your specific problem, <coughs> analyse it, make sense of it, and draw out useful actions that a real person could do. And that's where you show off all the higher level thinking. One of the things before I came across to Canberra, you can tell I'm Pommy, most of you know that by now. One of the things that I was involved in was a project called Student as Producer. You can Google it and look it up. The idea is rather than being a recipient or a customer or a consumer of information, we try to make you into creators of information, creators of knowledge. And that's really important. Because then again, you understand the value of it, whether it's good or bad or reliable. And the whole rest of your life is changed because you understand how knowledge is generated. So again, even though university is sometimes sold as a customer service interaction, it's a bit different. You're actually uh, paying for the opportunity to come and develop these new skills. I use the metaphor of you going to the gym. You get your membership, then you have to go and do the work with a little bit of help on the side. No one paying isn't enough to get you through. Sorry about that. But I will make it as clear as I can at every opportunity what gets you the D's and HD's that many of you want. There's already the marking rubric on there for your second coursework assignment. Very, very clear. If you don't understand what any of it means, ask Anthea or me, we'll tell you. The first quiz that we discussed yesterday is an online quiz about the labs. Yes, it's got a missing word component, which could be really easy. I have to design something that will mean that HD and D is good, so I'm going to make it a little bit devious. If you've attended or gone through the labs yourself and understand what's been done, if you've completed the analysis part of it, it should be fairly straightforward. But of course, you have to have actually understood and really know what's been found. The online exam as well, I've, I'm now getting the hang of giving online exams and there's flexibility, you can do it in your own home with a cup of tea, that's great. You can also have all of Google available to you and that might encourage people to take shortcuts. So I have to have an exam that accommodates that. And again, the emphasis isn't on memorising information, it's on how do you use the information. So a perfect exam question would be, here's a client with this problem, a motor control problem, how would you help them and justify that? Here's a research question, like in the labs, <coughs> you need to know this thing, how would you design an experiment that would answer that question? They're going to be the sorts of things, and that won't be something you can Google. And I'll give you know, enough questions that you can't sit next to your friend because they'll be fairly random to, oh, what have you got? Different question to me, damn. I'm getting the hang of doing clever online exams that force you to actually show off critical thinking skills. So far, so good. This is our course structure. If you don't care about uh, accreditations, you can ignore that middle column. In the old days, when I used to work through lecture by lecture, you'll see that there was a fairly clear structure, which looks a bit like you might get in any textbook. Because I introduce you to this 
face to face a few times and then let you go and find it, your problems out for yourselves. There's a couple of live lectures and then we move more online. And the main contact will be in those tutor rooms when you come in and say, here's what I'm thinking of doing. I'm finding this bit really hard, please help. Which we've done before. Some of you have done that with me now and you know it kind of works. The actual core topics, how do we define and get to grips with this information? Then we work through this model, information processing model, which is just a metaphor for how you would approach this problem. Please don't think there are blocks in the brain for sensing, decision making. Obviously that isn't true. But it's how we model it to understand it. And then at the end we do look at how a brain operates and looks and what happens when you break bits of it. That's really informative, by the way. If it wasn't for kind of illnesses and wars, we would know a lot less about how the brain works because obviously that's where a lot of bad things happen and specific bits of brains get broken. Ah, that's what it was doing before it broke. It's sad, but it's useful. As you can see on the right-hand side, three labs, and then I analyze the data in front of you because I know that everyone hates doing stats. I'll show you what it means and then you're good to go and do some, a little mini test. This chunk in bold here is a bit where you drive the process. You go from being a receiver of information to start off with to, okay, I need to drive this. If I turn up to a tube and just say, teach me, it's not gonna work. So in that block there, you're coming along and you're saying, this is my assignment. And by the way, some people turn up and go, yeah, I haven't started yet, which is a real world problem. It's that, that's how life works. And getting you that first one or two steps is still a valid outcome for me if that's where you're at. So that's fine, don't be embarrassed about that. Equally, some people will be saying, oh, I'm very close to the word limit, what can I do? And that's a different problem. I'll help at any of those stages, but if it helps you where you're at now, it's much more valuable. I really hope that comes across. The task opens in about week four and then two weeks to, to do that when you're ready. Last year I asked people to pick their own submission deadlines during this block. I kind of like that. It spreads out the marking but it also means that you get to say, I know that that week I'll have time to do the assignment, so I'll do that. So I'll ask you in the next week or two to pick your deadline. Okay? Not too scary. And then there'll be a window for the exam at the end. And I've copied the same typo. Ugh, terrible. It's May, not April. I've already talked about this. I get ahead of myself. There's a quiz with missing words. There's an assignment where you design an intervention for someone, which by the way, is the whole focus of next week's lecture. All I'm talking about is how you will do that. One thing which people really tripped up on last year, which I'll say now in lesson one, you'll be designing something which could last 10 sessions, be it 10 weeks, be it 10 months, 10-ish sessions. I don't want all 10 lesson plans. That isn't what we're here for. I want the justification and the design process and the thought behind it. In some respects, a lot of people can make up lesson plans for stuff that are just from thin air. So I need to see the workings in the background. The same way when you do a maths problem, if they can't see the workings, you won't get all the marks. The workings are key. That makes sense? I told you now, to your face, no excuses. And just so you know, you, are, you will be getting specific input on all of those assessments. So there's no kind of, you're on your own here. If you want to seek support online, face to face, the support is there. We're specifically teaching to those assessments. They're not kind of abstract, off to the side, just an afterthought. Everything is driven by those assessments. As a word of note, I think it really helps as a group, if we come along in a cheat room full of, say, 10, 15 people, 
and say, I'm having this problem and it's really interesting and what do you all think? And then I'll make sure you leave with uh, good advice. But by sharing the problems we're experiencing, the whole room gets to learn. Last year, honestly, people got a bit embarrassed and said, can you just tell me in private? But of course that hides some of the key learnings just between you and me. So if you can bear to speak to a couple of people rather than just me, I think it benefits everyone. Because everyone, so someone else in the room will go, oh, that affected me too. Oh, that affected me. I would love that to happen. But if people are a bit shy, I understand. I will put mock exam questions up, of course, so you can see how it works. Some of you know from, from previous attempts. What that means is people normally walk out or get back in touch afterwards saying, yeah, that was tough, but it was fair. I get it. There was no surprises, that sort of thing. This is an example of what I'm writing for your quiz. So it's like a, a fake introduction to a lab report. Fitz Law is a model, and I'll give you a couple of choices, whether it be a, because I've, I've made a bit of a thing in my lectures about types of model. So some are just descriptive, some are explanatory. So you should know that it's a descriptive model. It just says this thing happens. I'm not telling you why, but it happens. Descriptive model. And you just fill in the blanks. And every time there'll be a click, drop down, that's what I think the answer is. Again, you won't all get the same questions. So you'll have to prepare to answer anything and then receive your unique block. Make sense? Not too anxiety provoking? Oh, then no, no comment there, not even half a <laughs> comment. Okay, so we're not asking you to be passive receivers of spoon-fed information. We're asking you to be hunters and or chefs, metaphorically speaking, right? You go and find the information, you evaluate it, you process it. And I somehow have to mentor you through that process, which is much harder. But I'm not even going to pretend for a second that it's spoon feeding. I've put the lectures on YouTube because it's more accessible. Echo crashes all the time and you have to get to it through Moodle. YouTube, you can watch it on your phone, your iPad, you can pause it. It just seems to be more functional. So I prefer that. And no one yet has said, oh, give me Echo. Everyone seems to be okay with YouTube. I've heard one comment that some halls of residence charge you for data. That sucks. I'm sorry about that. Again, I can't really control that one. When you're ready, you can watch each one. Some will go early, some will go late. Again, it's self-paced. That's okay. The only time limits are the fact that it has to fit within the semester, basically. I'm very available within reason. One thing that I struggle with is people knocking on my door when I'm not there. Like, I have to, I'm just ridiculously busy. Some of you will know. I've got, I've got to teach you, and then I've got to write papers, and I've got to ask someone for some money, and I've got to do what I got money for off the last guy. It's just ridiculous. But it's quite fun, every so often. I will do everything I can to help, and you know that. But I won't break any rules. But that's a big difference to perhaps what happened all through school and perhaps even in other units. Uh, questions about the textbook I've had. Basically, if you have got access to it, great, it's fine. It will be a nice kind of foundation for you to work around. I don't think the content changes that much from edition to edition, even between different versions of the book, Schmidt and Risberg versus Schmidt and Lee. I think they're very similar. At the level we need to operate at, there's no big revolutions happening. At the forefront, where they're doing kind of pretty complex studies, way beyond our level two university, there's some different stuff, but for us, we, you know, it doesn't seem to change very much. If you don't get it, if you don't want to buy a textbook for that much money, I think you might be able to survive. I think there's enough out there. But also, it's a very good thing to have in your back pocket. Panic, mm. open the textbook, ah, oh, it's okay, it's there. Some people like that. I like to send announcements out and I assume that you've read them within 24 hours. That's pretty common across universities, so if 
you don't get the announcements sent to your actual email. And you can easily get them sent from your email to wherever your Gmail account is. Please do that. Because sometimes, you know, even yesterday we had a panic where sick kid, wife away, panic stations, just about survived the afternoon and need sometimes to make announcements pretty quick. Oh, and also, I once got a complaint someone had uh, not been told the exam was on, but you know by now the exams, the real exams are posted online on the internet. Our exams on, on Moodle, it's fine. But it's not the lecturer's fault, it's, it's all there for you. I've tried to be super detailed in my Moodle instructions, in my handbook, and I'm hoping that after, the, after this first couple of weeks where I explain everything and try and reduce that anxiety, you go, yeah, I get it. It's difficult, but I get it. That's the emotion I want you to have. Challenge, but you know how to proceed. Please, you guys, and tell your mates to print and bring those sheets to each lab. So you've got Hicks Law next week, Fitz, uh, Mirror Drawing the week after. The comment generally is that they're quite fun to do, but I need you to bring those along. I only have so many spare copies each week. And I do, obviously, expect you to engage and do the self-taught stuff, because if you don't, it's going to be really hard, <laughs> because those lectures won't be taking place live. I'd love it if you're able to come to the sessions and actually contribute to the whole group, not just in, in a corner with me saying, oh, I don't get that. Of course, I'll help those people, but if you want to share information, it just works really well. Uh, Extensions-wise, there's a form already on Moodle for you to fill in, send it to me, and then I've got an excuse to give you an extension. It's really easy. just need a form and some evidence. That's it. It's so easy. You just need to give me a good enough excuse to give you an extension. I've got no particular problem with doing it. I uh, know deadlines sometimes clash and things change, so I'm on your side there. The, the late policy, which we've managed to renew and change and make better, is that you lose 10% per day of whatever that assignment was worth. So if it's, well, basically I'll just give it a mark and then take 10% off each day. I've covered another unit that the university policy is that there's no more lose 10%. Zero. That was implemented last year. It sucked, everyone hated it. So, health are trying this. Right. But you're right, we tried it and there was a lot of complaints. <laughs> uh, that'll be it. Yes, the STEM have that policy and we copied them and no one liked it. This is generally what the feedback has been that this is what everyone kind of expects to happen. So, we just went along with that. Oh, whisperings. Is that okay? Is there a problem? Um, it said like 10 days, like working days, Monday, Friday, and Saturday, Sunday don't count, or do they count as well? For me, because you can hand in online, I'll count the weekend as well. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so if you get 75% and then lose 10, lose 10, lose 10, very quickly we've dropped into the fail region, so it sort of starts to still hurt a bit pretty quick. But, you know, each one's weighted, so... 20%, 40%, 40%. So it doesn't affect the whole unit, just that particular assessment. I know some people sometimes have to make a decision and just go, I'm going to have to take the penalty, I'm sorry, I've messed up. Well, I'd rather you didn't, but I understand. When you hand in coursework part two, please use only Word or PDF, and please make sure it's something that actually opens on a normal computer. Every year I get some file that just doesn't open. I write to the person saying that doesn't open, you'll get naught, and they just ignore me, and then they get naught. I'm sorry, I tried. Uh, oh, and by the way, with quizzes and exams, this is just me being super thorough, make sure you start with enough time before the window finishes, because when the window finishes, it closes and whatever you've written is frozen forever. Don't start with an hour left when you've got a three hour exam. That sort of thing. Make sense? Some people in the room are going like, what, that happens? Yeah. So I'll, well, me and Anthea will check and respond to our emails roughly once a day. Anthea more so than me, sometimes I have to vanish. I'm trying my best to make sense and I hope that, you can tell me, by the way, if I'm not making sense, I'm not that arrogant. Say, Rich, I didn't get that bit. I'll fix it, no problem. 
I, and you can look up the national benchmarks on the AQA or um, TEXA website and you'll see, yes, I think he's marking to those benchmarks. And if you need to, we can discuss it. I try and offer reasonable feedback. Usually the marking grid that I've got is super thorough and I'll usually add a comment to that if needs be. But certainly, please don't expect a kind of customer service thing. Think of it more as your trainer and you're trying to develop a lot with the advice of a trainer, except we're talking about abstract conceptual thinking rather than getting massive. Don't be here for that. And actually, it's not really down to me to get you a good mark. When people ask questions of me, what they're asking is, was the content sufficient? Have you marked it fairly? Have you reviewed the process and kept detailed records so that you can be audited later? That's what I get challenged on. No one actually says, has everyone got awesome marks in your unit? I just have to be super fair. So keep that in mind. I want you to do well, but it's not actually my job depends on it. It's just, I like it. I'm a human being, I like it when you do well. So please try hard and stuff. As an introduction, I think that's, you now know a bit more about what I like. Genuine, honest, motivated. Yes, perfectionist, but you know, that's just me. Three assessments, one small, two really worth giving some attention to. And the, all the learning points to those assessments. So the lectures mainly work on the exam, the coursework and the lab report. We teach directly to those. 